On February 8th, Congress passed a bipartisan budget deal that will increase government spending caps by $300 billion in the next two years. Well, you would think that if we had Republicans in control, we'd actually get the spending under control too. But once again, it's proven time and time again that no matter who's in office, spending is always the issue. But there is some light in the darkness. Senator Rand Paul, the Republican of Kentucky, was one lawmaker trying to stop the government from spending us into oblivion, but he was overruled. What you are seeing is reckless recklessness being passed off as bipartisanship, he said. Paul described a ridiculous example of wasteful government spending, a natural gas fuel station in Afghanistan that nobody could use. That's $45 million in taxpayer dollars down the drain that supposedly went to reduce the carbon footprint. So let's take a look at that video and see what Rand Paul had to say. And if this doesn't make your blood boil, I don't know what will. The Department of Defense last year, we found this out, spent $45 million on a natural gas gas station in Afghanistan, $45 million. It was projected to cost $500,000. 86 some odd overruns, you know, of cost overruns, $45 million. So you're scratching your head and you're saying, natural gas gas station, what is that? We don't have one in my town. We don't have any in my town either. They didn't have any in Afghanistan, but you know what? They decided that they needed to reduce the carbon footprint of Afghanistan. Oh dear God. All right. They wanted to reduce the carbon footprint of Afghanistan. I thought the military's job was to kill the enemy. So the military's job now is to reduce their carbon footprint. So they bought a $45 million gas station that serves up natural gas. And guess what they discovered? They kept waiting. So there's a guy sitting next to the pump. You can imagine him sitting on a stool and he's waiting for customers. No one ever came. And then someone said, oh my goodness, they don't have any cars that run on natural gas. Well, that would probably be the same if you came to my town in Kentucky. Almost nobody's got a car in America. This, they live in a primitive state in Afghanistan and you're expecting them to have natural gas cars. So they said, well, gosh, we already built this $45 million gas station. God, no. Maybe we should buy them some cars. Oh my so gosh. they bought them some cars <laughs> with your money. They paid for the gas station with your money. Now they bought them some cars with your money. But then the people still wouldn't come in. They said, we don't have any money. And they said, okay, well, we've got the gas station. We've got your cars. You need a credit card. So we gave them credit cards. So they have a U.S. credit card that you pay for to take their natural gas car that you paid for to go to a natural gas gas station because we're reducing the carbon footprint in Afghanistan. Is that not one of the most incredibly ridiculous things that you have ever heard? I mean, one of the things I've talked about for years now in regards to the reckless spending that our government does is in regards to pork projects and what these senators try to tie to the bills in order to blackmail uh, their bills getting passed. In, in essence, what happens is if I, if I introduce a bill for $5 million to do something, whatever it is, a, and I need the support of other senators and I go to them and ask for their support. Typically what will happen is one of those senators will, will say, yeah, I agree with you on that. Okay. But in order for me to vote for your bill, I'm going to need an additional million dollars for my community where no lie. This is actually one here. Here's some examples. I want a million dollars to build uh, pipe tunnels under the highways so that turtles can cross the highway safely by going underneath them. As if you can somehow send a message to the turtles to specifically go to those areas and use those tunnels instead of going over the road. Or for instance, we spent millions of dollars researching the mating habits of salmon out in California. We spent millions of dollars on an airport in this one area where no planes ever fly in or out of it. It was basically for the private use of people that probably paid off the politicians of that area. So in order to get bills passed, this is exactly the sausage making process that people always talk about is to do a $5 million bill, it'll inflate up to $30 million just to get the support behind it to actually get something passed even though those people are saying 
yes, I agree with you. I think that should be done too. But listen, I'm not going to be able to get my stuff passed if I was just to propose it on my own. Who's, who's going who's gonna to put together a bill for turtle tunnels and, and think that that would actually be able to garner enough votes to actually pass in Congress on its own? So obviously I have to tie it to something else. Well, no, the merit of the bill that's being introduced should be merit enough. It's time to end all this reckless spending. And if you think that we have a problem in America where we have this mentality right now where we need to be charging, or not charging, but basically taxing the rich more and more to support a system that you feel is failing the people because we're not spending enough money on people, my word, let's get the spending actually under control. Okay, before you start going to people to pay out more money to fix the problem, how about we pull back on the spending of other crap that we shouldn't be spending on and reallocating that to things that you may feel are more important? Listen, I'm against universal health care. I'm against free college tuition because I don't think it's needed. Okay. A lot of the people that go to college don't actually end up working in that field. So it's, it's actually a deterrent or an encouragement, I would say, for you if you're paying for that schooling to actually pursue that career and set a good concrete mindset that that's what you're going to be pursuing. But then you also have people that never end up going to college because they don't need to. Some of the careers that are out there have better opportunities by being an apprentice for something. As a matter of fact, in most cases, you can learn more by being on the job and apprenticing or shadowing someone for a short period of time than you ever could in college with all the extra nonsense bullcrap that they teach you to keep you in school longer. Most of the four-year degrees out there could be achieved in a matter of two years if they cut everything else out of there that they say makes a rounded individual. That's not really true, okay? It's not. If the kids want to learn about that stuff, they should be able to learn about it on their own time or pay for additional classes, but it shouldn't be required for the degrees. You want to talk about education and tuition being so expensive. I know we're getting off topic here, but tuition being so expensive for colleges is because they inflate it by so much to add all this extra stuff. So you have to go for multiple years that you don't even need to necessarily be there because you could have gotten the degree two years earlier if you didn't have to take social welfare classes for crying out loud. If you're going for marketing, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense why you would have to do that. So we could do all these things. We could cut down on the cost of college. We could cut down on the cost of healthcare in America. If we could all get together as a people and take a look at this situation and say together, my word, people, we don't need to be spending money on this stupid stuff like a 45 million freaking dollar gas station out in Afghanistan that people couldn't use anyway, that we then paid even more money to then go and buy cars for those people who didn't have money to even drive those cars, and then we had to give them American credit cards to do that, all to reduce a carbon footprint. I have to tell you, the production of those cars, the building of that fuel station, and the fact that we're over there at all, the back and forth between that, the carbon footprint that was created to get rid of a carbon footprint is going to take years at this point to come back from. But we need to get together as, a, as an American society and realize that some things just shouldn't have money spent on them. We need to figure out a way to come up with a grant situation through private organizations that have a vested interest in the outcomes of the types of things that they want these pet projects spent on and give an opportunity for people to seek out those grants to actually do that through those businesses that would actually pay for such results. Again, our government is not supposed to be, just like our public schools are not supposed to be, a social experiment. That's not what we're going for here. We can take so much money that's already there being wasted and put it towards things that will make both sides happy, okay? Instead of raising taxes on people, which is always the Democrat solution, to get more stuff. 
we can allocate that wasteful spending towards the things that they actually think are necessary. And if the Democrats actually believed, politician-wise, that these things were important, they would be the first ones in line to take a look at the line items in their budgets and say, this is wasteful spending. If this is actually important to us, then we need to take from this over here and allocate it over here instead. And that just goes to show you why it's called sausage making in our American culture.